If you saw one of our latest videos and decide to buy a 3D printer, wait! Don't do it before finishing this video. And if you are thinking about buying your first printer or upgrading your beating up one, we'll compare two entry-level options with the best price performance. So pay attention. Which one is the best? Let's find out. To compare them, we will use the same file and the same filament on both and see how it goes. Printing volume. Ender 3 V3 SE has a build plate of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. And this height was essential for me to print my cat food storage since it's 240 millimeters high. Bamboo Lab A1 Mini is 180 by 180 by 180 and you might be wondering it's too small but look at the size of this cube it was printed using the whole build plate and height of the printer do you think this is a small between them both height may make a difference it all depends on what you want to print but both can handle a lot Layer resolution. Oh, now I can see. <laughs> Both models have similar layers resolution, usually from 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters. A1 has a bit more flavor. I use 0.2 millimeters layer height for both of them and check this out. There's a slightly difference. I prefer the A1s, but that doesn't mean Ender is bad. Hold on. No, 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 no. Printing speed! <laughs> <laughs> now we'll see the greatest difference because Ender 3 V3 SE prints up to 180 millimeters per second while the A1 Mini gets to 500 millimeters per second. You blink, you miss. And with Ender 3, we usually only go up to 60 millimeters per second. Otherwise, if it is too fast, the chance of the print failing is way higher. A1 Mini is a racer. She will print way faster. Just make sure your filament can handle the printing speed settings. Easy of use. Assembly. Both are easy to assemble, but Ender 3 requires a bit more attention. Nothing reading the instruction manual won't fix, but A1 Mini comes pretty much ready. You just need to plug in and start printing. User interface. Ender 3 V3 SE's screen is not touchscreen. You control everything through a single button. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bamboo A1 Mini's screen is touchscreen. And you can send your files from your PC or directly from your phone with Bamboo Studio or Bamboo Handy. Leveling sensor. Both have auto leveling, but A1 is a bit more precise and you will have less problem with it. It doesn't mean Enders is bad, but sometimes you will have to adjust offset Z distance manually, which is the distance from the nozzle to the build plate. Filament compatibility. Both printers accept PLA and PTG or PAT, G, I don't know how to say in English, which are the most used materials and some others like ABS, for example, both can print it, but you will need special care like enclosure. Something that makes a lot of difference for me to avoid waste with A1, you can use your filament up until the end because it has a sensor to inform you that filament is over. It's over, man. <laughs> The filament ran out. Please insert a new filament. And it waits until you put another one. Ender 3 doesn't have that sensor, which means you need to keep an eye on the printer whenever your filament is running low, so you doesn't miss your cue. Multicolor. Ender 3 V3 SE only accepts a single filament at a time. So if you want to print dual color models, you have some limitations, like separating specific parts of the piece so you can switch the filament manually. But with Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, you can get the combo version with the AMS, which is the compartment here, that you can start several different filaments at the same time, and it makes the switch automatically. This allows you to set different colors for different parts of your printer on the slicer, just like this one. This can be a big change, but this is an upgrade and we are comparing the printers without any accessories on this video, so let's move on. The final verdict. Hang on, hang on! Hang on! Before the final results, 
take a look at these two printers side by side. Which one will be the winner? If you want to know how to print on this beauty like a pro, click the link on the description. The final verdict. <laughs> Printing volume 1.2 Ender 3v3 SE. Layer resolution, it's a tie. But since A1 got the flavor going on, we decided to give her half a point. So, half a point for you, A1 Mini. <laughs> Printing speed 1.2 A1 Mini. Assembly, it's a tie. They are both too simple to assemble. User interface. Even though A1 has a touch screen and a few other resources, both are pretty easy to navigate, so it's a tie. Leveling sensor. Both have auto leveling, but we'll give A1 half a point because she's more precise and has better vibration control. The only one that have vibration controls and their tree don't have it. Filament compatibility. They both support pretty much the same material, so it's a tie. Half a point for A1 Mini because it has the option for AMS and up to the day of this video release there's no such option for Ender 3. Overall A1 Mini is ahead of Ender 3 V3 SE. But there's something missing isn't it? What about the price? Well the difference between Ender 3 and A1 Mini is around 30 bucks on the states because I'm recording from Brazil. <laughs> With Ender being a little on the cheaper side but not by much. So that gives Ender a point as well which makes this car a tie makes this car a tie. That's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? The answer to the beginning of this video is that it depends how much you are willing to spend to start and what do you like to print. So you need to decide. Leave in the comments which one of them is the best for starters. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you're not subscribed yet, then subscribe to see more videos like this. See you in the next video. Ba-boom!